Come join me by my fire, and I'll tell you all a tale. Come sit and warm yourself with a cup of mead or ale. These tales of old, if they're not told, could soon be lost to time. But a story shared between us becomes yours as well as mine. You might not know this, but the gods are much like us in many ways. They love and laugh, shout and cry, eat and drink. And when they are thirsty and they have nothing to drink, they go on a great and epic adventure, a run for beer. Long ago, so long ago that things ancient might seem recent by comparison, the gods returned from a hunt. They prepared the meat and set out a great feast. But long before the food was gone, they each began to feel a great thirst. They waved their wands and in the blood of their kills, they scried seeking a solution. And they learned that the giant Aegir had many cauldrons in which he could brew beer. And so the gods set out for the home of Aegir. And when they arrived at his hall, Thor, as diplomatic as ever, looked him straight in the eye and declared, you will host feasts for the gods. Ajir's smile faded and his happiness was replaced with irritation. Very well then, but you must fetch me a cauldron large enough to brew beer for all the gods, as none I have will suffice. Well, the gods talked amongst themselves, but none knew where they could find such a cauldron. Except for Tyr, who pulled Thor off to the side and told him that he recalled his father, Hymir the Wise, a giant, having a cauldron a mile deep. Thor asked if Tyr thought Hymir might let them have the cauldron, and Tyr replied with a sly grin, If we are clever. And so the two set out in Thor's goat-drawn chariot, traveling an entire day from Asgard, stopping briefly at Egil's house and leaving the goats there, but that is a tale for another time. They then continued on foot to the east of the river's Elivagar, near the end of the sky, to the home of Hymir. And when they entered, they met Tyr's grandmother, who was a fearsome sight, with nine hundred heads, and his mother, fair and beautiful, with golden hair, who greeted her son warmly and brought him a beer. Upon seeing Thor, killer of giants, she suggested they hide, for her husband has a foul temper and might attack Thor before even considering that he was a guest, and therefore do hospitality. So Tyr and Thor hid behind a cauldron, and waited. Hymir arrived. The icicles quaked with his giant steps. His beard was a frozen tangle of frost, and he was greeted by his wife. Welcome home, husband. Be glad, for our son has returned home and brings with him a guest, Thor. They're behind that cauldron. Hymir raged at the thought of Thor, killer of giants in his home but he had been declared a guest and could not be attacked. In anger, he struck the wall with his fist, breaking a timber in half and shattering several cauldrons. Very well then, I shall have three oxen slaughtered for dinner, he grumbled. And so three oxen were slaughtered and boiled for dinner. The table was set and the meat and beer was served. Thor, by himself, ate two whole oxen and Hymir grumbled, annoyed, if we are to feed all of us tomorrow evening, then we must go fishing. So they bedded down for the night, and in the morning, Thor said that he would row if Hymir would provide the bait for fishing. So Hymir bade Thor go out to the pasture with his oxen and find bait there. It should be easy for you to find bait, he taunted. Thor went to the pasture and looked around, and seeing only oxen, he shrugged and grasped the biggest black ox by the horns and tore its head off. Hymir, upon seeing this, grew angry. 
what you have done is worse than last night, he grumbled. But said little else since he was the one that sent Thor to the pasture for bait, and he hadn't been more specific. And this is why in the Havamal, Odin bids us to speak precisely. Well, Hymir and Thor left here with his mother, and they went down to the seashore where Hymir's boat was moored. And they rowed out to sea, and Hymir cast his line first. A master fisherman, he caught two whales on one hook and pulled them in. And he smirked at Thor as if to dare him to do better than that. So calmly, Thor baited his hook with the ox head and cast it out, letting it sink into the murky depths. After a time, something took the line and fought against Thor reeling it in. But the mighty god would not yield, and he continued pulling the line in, fighting for every inch. He pulled on the line so hard that his feet punched straight through the bottom of the boat, and he braced them against the sea floor. Rising through the murky depths, the water churned as Thor's catch approached the surface, for he had caught none other than Jormungandr the Midgard Serpent, the great dragon that encircled the entire world. Thor held the line tightly in one hand as he raised his hammer in the other to strike out at the massive serpent. But Hymir, terrified at the sight of the creature, cut the line and it sank back into the depths. Angry, Thor knocked him over the side and suggested he walk home before he rowed the ship back to shore. Back on the beach, an angry and soaking wet Hymir told Thor to tie up the boat while he brought the whales to the house. Not immediately seeing a convenient place to tie the boat, Thor simply lifted the whole thing, oars and all, and carried it to the house as well, where he tied it, further irritating Hymir. Once inside his home, quite irritated with Thor's behavior, Hymir held out a cup and declared, that although he rode well, he could not call a man truly strong unless that man could break this cup. So Thor took the cup and hurled it against a stone pillar. To his surprise, the pillar shattered, but the cup did not. As he hefted the glass again, he heard Hymir's wife whisper, my husband's head is the hardest thing you will find. So Thor smashed the glass over Hymir's head, shattering it to pieces. Hymir looked down at the shards of glass that fell on his lap and bemoaned. Such a treasure that was. It seems that you have won your cauldron, goat god. No more shall I be able to declare my beer brewed. That is, he smirked, if you can carry it out of my home. Thor gripped the cauldron and hefted once, twice, and on the third try heaved it up onto his mighty shoulders, his feet breaking through the floorboards. An angry and defeated Hymir watched as his floor joined his boat in having holes in it. Tyr bade his parents farewell, and the two gods were on their way. They traveled some time before Thor just happened to glance back over his shoulder to see Hymir leading a throng of frost and fire giants after them. Seems as though he really wanted his cauldron back. Thor tossed the cauldron to the ground and held Mjolnir. He held it high and he hurled it at the approaching horde and slew them all. When they stopped at Egil's home to retrieve his goats and chariot, they found one of his goats with a lame leg, thanks to Loki's mischief. But that is a tale for another time. The cauldron fetched and brought to Aegir's home. The gods eagerly awaited the fine brown brew that would soon be made for them. But that, too, is a tale for another time. The hour has now grown late, and it's time for us to go. So press like and subscribe, so when a new tale comes, you'll know.